Okay, good afternoon everybody. This is Thursday, December 4th, 2014. I am Corey Stolzenbach, now being joined by a man who spent 62 years in professional baseball. He made his major league debut with the Cubs in August of 1949. He was a second baseman in the big leagues, also played for the Senators, the Dodgers, the Giants, the Athletics. He was a coach for the Minnesota Twins when they won the World Series in 1987 and 1991. Also... Also won more than 1,200 games as a minor league manager. He is Wayne Terwilliger and Wayne, I must say, I understand you were looking for work uh, not too long ago. Do you have a job for the holidays? I finally got a job. Excellent. What are you doing? I'm working for uh, Brookshire's uh, Groceries Concern. I'm packing bags, uh, grocery bags. I'm working uh, probably 20 hours a week, and uh, I pack, ma uh, pack bags, you know, grocery, grocery bags. That is excellent, Wayne. Good for you, sir. So you're a former <laughs> cub. You're a former Cub, and you make your debut in 1949. At the time, Wrigley Field was only 35 years old. But what did playing at Wrigley Field as your home ballpark mean to you? Oh. I'll tell you, it was a pretty good hitting ballpark. That was one reason, and I liked playing in the daytime more than the nighttime at that time. So that was another reason. And uh, Chicago was the Cubs, you know, I always kind of been one of my uh, favorite National League teams. I was uh, from Michigan. Uh, the Tigers are my club, really. But it was great, sure. Yes, you were born in Clare, Michigan. When was the last time you were at Wrigley Field? The uh, last time I was at where, Wrigley? Yes. Oh, God. That's going back a long way. So. Uh, it was prob probably uh, in 51, 51 when I was with the... I was traded to Brooklyn in 51, and I was probably... Let's see, I... Right around in the 50s, early 50s. That's a long time. Maybe you should come back. I know they just had their 100th anniversary, but yes, in June of 1951, you were traded to the Brooklyn Dodgers with Andy Pafko, Johnny Schmitz, and Rube Walker to Brooklyn in an eight-player trade. What did the four of you discuss during that trade when you were going to Brooklyn? The four of you guys, when you are going to Brooklyn to the Dodgers, what did the four of you discuss? That does happen. I know that Billy Pierce, when he was traded to the White Sox, he heard on the radio the Tigers sent him to Chicago. You tied you tied at first place with the Giants in 1951 for first place, and you didn't play in a three-game playoff. And it's hard to take Jackie Robinson's job at second base, but how often do you think to yourself what might have been if you had played during that uh, playoff series? <laughs> a lot of pressure on I know that. Uh, can I interrupt with one, one uh, talk about Jackie Robinson? You sure may, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, well, one of my big thrills in baseball, when I was with the Dodgers in 51, I uh, got a, a pinch hit against the Cardinals in Abbott's Field with the bases loaded. I got a little a single to center field to win the game. Well, I'm coming back off the field, and here, here's what's greeting me. Jackie Robinson is reaching out to shake my hand and right behind him is Pee Wee Reese with his hand extended too. I got that picture in my den here and uh, it's one of my big things in my career to have that picture. And it was, it was a, you know, a shot from the press box and they, don't, they didn't, they did that then and it was a great picture, and uh, I'm real proud to have it. 
That's wonderful. And I see that you are going to see the 42 movie. What did you think of the movie about Jackie Robinson 42? What would you think of that? Well, you know, nothing could, uh, you know, equal that. So uh, I, I, I had my criticisms about it a little bit here and there. But, uh, but back playing with Jackie Robinson, playing when I did, which was very little. And Reese, you know, and those guys, it was a big thrill for me. And to, to have the, that picture hanging up on my wall, that's one of my big things. So I can't say any more about it. Yes, sir, but also in 1952, you didn't play in the big leagues. You were down on the farm with the St. Saint Paul Saints in AAA ball, and you had a very good season that year. What kind of things did you work on in order to get back to the majors? Uh, I still shortened up on the bat real short, and, and I put the ball in play more, and, and I, I got some more hits than I had before. But, but I had a pretty good year. It was a short year for me there, but I had a good year. And uh, how did I get back? That was 52, and then but Bucky Harris and Washington Senators, they saw the 300 hit. Thing, and they knew I was a good fielder, so they gave me a shot. Yes, they did. And in fact, you were playing well in Washington. You actually caught the attention of President Eisenhower. He was praising your play. Did you ever get to talk to him? Uh, yeah, how about that? I, I, got, I got the picture of the thing in the paper when he said to uh, Bucky Harris, I think it was, he said, uh, But you never actually talked to him, though, one-on-one? -on -one, you never got to talk to him directly? Oh, Eisenhower? Yes. No, no, I never did. Okay, let's I'm talk about... To. I'm reading his book now. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Okay, sorry about that. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, that's all right, that's all right. Let's talk about a series that you had in 1954 against the Philadelphia Athletics, May 28th through May 30th. You had a home run in three straight games. Uh, what do you remember about that series? It's funny that you recognize that. That was great. I think I had four home runs all year. And I got those three in a row. Uh, I was trying to hit the ball hard and fast. And they didn't really let me stances and thing and this and this and that, holding the, the, the ball the bat back in my hand and I tried that. And Christ, I got hot for three, for three days and hit three whole months. And then, of course, I kept trying it. It didn't work like that way very long. But that's the truth. That's, uh, that's one of the strange things in my career. And how are you? I my, you know, I knocked in my first run in '48. Yes. My first professional run in '48. I got beat with the bases loaded. When I was with Des Moines, and uh, you, you mentioned me starting out in '49. I started in '48. I hit 196 and got beat with the bases loaded for my first RBI. Not many people can say that. <laughs> Well, what were your teammates saying during that series when you hit those three home runs? Uh, how were your teammates embracing you during that time? I, uh, I don't remember really much about that. I remember there, uh, uh, one of the coaches said something to me, what, what, like, what's, go, what's coming off to all you or something like that. And, and uh, the, the manager of the... I think you're referring to Bucky Harris. He was the Senators manager at the time. Yeah. Well, you got traded to the New York Giants, or I think they purchased you, excuse me, they purchased you from Washington, and Leo DeRocher was your skipper there. Who would you like playing for better between Bucky Harris and Leo DeRocher? Who would you like playing for better? Oh, well, that's easy. Uh, I'd like to play with Ford. 
for the reason that is I asked uh, one of the coaches at Washington that in about August sometime, I was really getting tired, and I said to the coach, I can't think of his name, no, God damn it. Anyway, I said, hey, how about asking Bucky if I can get a day off of my goddamn, I'm, I'm pooped. And he came back and said, well, I said something to Bucky, and he didn't like that idea. And so I didn't get a day off, and I thought, what the hell? The manager of the club, and the guy's not saying anything. I never complained about anything, and he has for a day off. He must have been hurt a little bit. Not that I was hurting, but I mean, you know, I was pooped. But I never got one. So anyway, that's it. And gee, DeRosa was easy to play for. He never gave me anything to work to should play or anything, uh, anything like that. Or he told me just to be use my own judgment on different things. And, and uh, you know, and he wasn't really in a big. Uh, we were in third place and never changed that year, I think. So uh, it was an exciting year for him. So I don't believe I believe he, uh, you know, it was exciting for me. Uh, so let's say that. You uh, you spent all of 1957 and 1958 in the minors, and the Tigers were your team, and you were in the organization, but you never came up. But you did get a chance again in 1959 with the Kansas City Athletics. What did being back up in the majors mean to you? Oh, it meant a lot because, um, you know, I, I, I was really, I thought I had a chance to get back. And uh, when I was picked up by... Uh, Kansas City, you know, I thought, well, I'll get a chance to play. Well, I didn't get a chance to play as much as I wanted to, but I did have one stretch here where we won something like 13 games in a row, and I got in on most of those. But I had a little trouble with my arm at that time, but uh, that was a big thing, you know, getting to big leagues. And I, I always felt that I, I couldn't, uh, to me, uh, the Cubs, traded me, that surprised me. I didn't expect to play with the Dodgers. Got with Washington, played that one year, had a good year. Next year, uh, Bucky Harris, uh, you know, I started off slow, so uh, he gave some job to somebody else. And I, I always kept thinking, well, God damn it, give me a chance here. To, you know, that was my attitude towards it. I got to the Giants and had a good year for them. The next year they brought in some young guy, big guy, I can't think of his name. And Bill Rigney was the manager that, that year. And hell, I didn't get much of a chance at all. That, that year. I thought, what's coming off here? What the hell am I doing wrong? You know. So I, uh, I enjoyed playing in the minor leagues because more so because I didn't get much of a chance. It was one year and that was about it. And I moved on. Why do you think you didn't get that much of a chance in the big leagues? I don't know. I mean, I was trying to figure it out. I'd get off to a slow start, and, uh, and, and some they had uh, clubs that, uh, Washington especially, they had some young guys there trying to work into the organization. And, Chris, uh, I had a, a real good year with Washington when they bought me. And I, the Bucky Harris, I thought, you know, he was a good guy and everything. And then next year, uh, I didn't play a hell of a lot in spring training, and uh, nobody said anything to me then. And the start the season, I I started the season, but uh, they had a couple of young guys there go out and and I don't know. Uh, I uh, lots probably sour grapes, but I always felt like I didn't have the right the manager situation to get a good shot. I know I had more talent than what uh, I was showing. And I understand... This is more than this. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes, you played two games with the Athletics in 1960, and you retired as a full-time player. You had a sore back. Tell me how the sore back came about. Sore back? Yes. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember that. I had a... Uh, I don't remember the sore back. I didn't. I, in spring training, 
I had some trouble with my with my arm, but uh, outside of that, I didn't. I was all right. They changed managers, you know. Uh, uh, the Kansas City did too. There was another one of those manager changes. No, I don't know what's wrong. Someone wrong. <laughs> I don't have any answers to that. It's okay. During the 1960s, though, even though you were mostly a manager, you did actually play a handful of games when you managed as well during the minors. What was it like to be a player manager as well, even if only for a handful of games? Uh, you know, I, I kind of liked that. I, I missed, when I was managing, I missed playing. So when I got a chance to do it, I played. I didn't, you know, didn't do much. I got a base hit one time in the AAA there. Uh, it was it was kind of tough just playing a little bit, but it was fun. So I enjoyed that. And I, you, I thought I was going to get a chance to to move up in the in the, when I was in Triple A. I had some good years and I had some bad years too. But overall, I, my one and loss were uh, you know pretty good. You had more than 1,200 wins. I was just about to bring that up because you managed many years in the minors, 13 seasons. You were a third base coach, a first base coach in the majors, but you were never a manager. Yeah, all yeah, right. Uh, no, I think I probably, uh, when uh, Hal Keller was a general manager of the Seattle team, you know, I, I was a good friend of his, and, and uh, I think that if I Maybe I talked to him about managing, and he was he could have hired me, but um, I I probably said the wrong thing. I said, I'm, well, I don't want to, I don't want a lot of help from the front office. I said I'd like somebody to let me manage, you know, if I was. And I don't think that said too well with Hal, but he was a hell of a guy, a great guy, Hal Keller. I went back and I played for him, you know, for years. And, uh, had uh, just uh, I couldn't I didn't have a better guy to work with than Hal Geller. Thirteen seasons as a minor league manager. Eight of those you were actually a winner. You had winning seasons as eight of uh, thirteen as a minor league skipper. In two thousand five with the Fourth Work Cats, you won your championship. And so in what ways were you able to get the most out of your players as a minor league skipper? guys that could run a little bit, I, I was really, uh, that was a big deal for me. i get some guys on the offense that could run, and I'd let them run, you know, and I'd run, and I'd, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, as a manager of the pitchers, I, uh, I was always pretty good with, uh, with the pitchers, the pitching staff. I'd, I'd have them, uh, I'd have this, both different plays of, work on in the uh, uh, no I just I like speed and I like pitchers who uh, you know could could good moves make the, make the catching easy I like that okay and uh, you were a first base coach as I said for Minnesota when they won the World Series in 1987 and 1991. And there's some common ground there between both teams because, hey, neither team did well the year before. They were in second to last place in the American League West in 1986. They were in last place in the AL West in 1990. Yet, they both won Game 7 of the World Series in 87 and 91. Which one holds a bigger sentiment in your heart between those two years, those two World Series championships? Tom Kelly was a good baseball man, you know, an exceptional baseball man, and he had worked with the guys in the minors, and he had those guys there to work with, and, uh, the, you know, it was, it was a, just a, a good situation for the players and Kelly, and, and he did a great job to, you know, you can see it, uh, to win that many series, and both of them were comebacks. For for the club and, and, and by the way that was that was exciting too for me to be part of that. But was either year more special for you than the other? Uh, if I was going to say, I don't think so. I mean, both of them were great. They're exciting, you know. 
that, but that first one, I couldn't believe that we were, we had won the, the World Series in my second year there, you know, the, and I thought, geez, this is great, you know, and we won. I, I think we won the next one in Toronto, or, or not, not Toronto, but we won the pennant in Toronto in 91, and that was a, I knew a little bit more about it, and I called on the phone to my wife and my sister, and that, that one, so they both just got excited. That, that's big time. And by the way, I see where the cut was 300 some thousand dollars Yeah, well, Giancarlo Stan just signed a uh, 13-year contract worth more than $300 million with the Marlins. Oh, he did? Yes. Yeah. Giancarlo Stan in Miami, he uh, he signed a contract. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, I, I, just, I see where uh, the outfielder went back with Minnesota, and he got a $10 million contract for one, one year. He, Christ, he's 39 years old. You're talking about Torrey Hunter, the former twin, yes. See, after yeah. stints with the Angels yeah. and Tigers, he's back in Minnesota with the twin, Twins, yes. Now, how the hell did you get a contract like that? You know, you, know, you had a heck of a year for the Tigers. <laughs> but he's 39 years old, and you get a $10 million one-year contract. I mean, that just sounds a kilter. You retired from baseball in 2010. What was the hardest part about leaving the game? Oh, just, I just enjoyed the game. I really did. I tell you, I'd still be in it, but the cats and got struggled. They had struggled. They had struggled with their paychecks and all this, and then they got to be a pain in the butt. Uh, so I did to get out. But and that and the heat, the heat from summer heat, you know, started to get to him, and so, you know, I, uh, I decided to, uh, I had to say retire because I didn't feel like it, but I still feel good, but anyway, so I'm, I'm going on the 90 now, you know, that's, uh, and uh, I, I was shooting for 80 some, and now, of course, I'm, I'm working every day or every other day, but Berkshire's grocery store, I'm bagging groceries, and uh, I feel pretty good, so I don't know when I'll quit. Yeah, you'll be 90 next June. Do you have any big plans for the celebration? No, 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 no really, it's all for myself. I don't, I don't, I can't celebrate. I don't want to do that, but I do feel good, and uh, I, I meet a lot of people in my job I got, and uh, I talk to a lot of people, well, half people know who I am, and half of them don't have any idea, and I kind of like that, and I get to talk, a lot of bullshit goes on, and good people to work for, they really are. Well, Wayne, I must say, you've been a wonderful guest. It's been a pleasure spending the last half hour with you. Wayne Terwilliger, uh, everybody. You I can... wish I could do better by damn voice start skipping off on me. But hey, the job you're doing or want to do, you're talking about, that's great. You know, When I was a player in the 55, I used to set up my whatever I had playing I could talk into, and I'd pretend I was describing a game and opening uh, opening conversation and then going to the game. I could make up a whole game. And I thought, well, that's great. And I was really looking forward to that. So don't you give up on it. Because I'm sure I, what you say in your letter uh, makes sense. You're passionate and, and things like that. You sound like you know what you're talking about. So good luck to you. 
Thank you, Mr. Terwilliger. That really means a lot. Everybody, our listeners, Wayne Terwilliger, more than six, uh, more than sixty years in baseball. You can buy his two thousand six autobiography for the holidays. Terwilliger Bunce One. It came out in two thousand six. Probably a very good read. Very informative. A lot of stories from the man. Thank you so much, Mr. Terwilliger. Have a great holiday, and I hope you enjoy yourself bagging groceries. Okay. <laughs> All right. Take care, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye.